Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal talking on an important topic, space management. We are talking about how to manage the space available to us. Owning a space is a dream for many people. It is precious. When we talk about the space, it is a plain floor area or we can also say the carpet area. In today's world, space is very costly. Everybody cannot afford to buy space. Hence, it is very necessary to manage the space or maximize the utilization of the available space. Here you are seeing a basic home with one bedroom. These are basic requirements of a home. Entrance. With the entrance, you usually find the drawing room. Then with according to the floor area, we can attach the drawing room with the kitchen or with the bedroom. Along with that, we can also have the bathing and toilet area. If some space is available, that is shown here, an empty room which is not titled, which can be used for variety of purposes according to the needs of the family. So, this is the basic format or the floor plan of a home having a one bedroom. Now, we will talk about the importance of space management. What is that? Space management is the allocation and division of interior space to accommodate the furniture, appliances and other utility items along with decorative articles in homes, offices or any other place. This is all about division of the space to put everything together in the available space and still be functional. It allows to fulfill the needs of the people living in the home for all types of activities like sleeping, cooking, bathing, etc. in a desirable and comfortable manner. So, we all have a, some kind of imagination how our home should look and feel good and comfortable. So, the proper space planning is necessary that can make the huge difference in aesthetics as well as functionality in each area of the house. It provides maximum utilization of available space for efficient and effective functions of each individual. Space management also provide some safety and security. For example, we cannot put any kind of furniture or any kind of decorative article, even the plants. Sometimes we try to and put everything inside the house, but we can fall. So, we have to be very careful when we are designing the space that should provide the safety and security. It allows the flexibility in a space for future addition of any items in home. What does it mean? That means we cannot fix everything together at one time and live forever. Many times you keep on adding some kind of furniture, some kind of decorative item depending upon the requirement of the family members. When we try to design the home, we keep on using the creative and innovative ideas for maximum utilization of the available space for better living. I keep on repeating the word maximum utilization of the available space. That is the crux of the space management and Space management is the vital component of the interior designing. It also entails the use of principles of designs, maybe the rhythm, balance, color, texture, everything. We look everything to frame 
the space in a decorative or aesthetic manner. In this lesson, we will learn the importance of management, different types of work centers and how to maximize the utilization of the space. Now there is a term called space organization. Space organization means assigning the space for allocating the different items in different places and arrange them systematically. Now we will talk about different activity areas in home. What are they? Cooking area, washing area where you wash the clothes, sleeping area we you comfortably sleep, playing area which can be accommodated with other rooms, study area and the where you watch the TV and entertain yourself and sometime you gather the family member for any kind of celebration. Now we will talk about the work centers. What is that? The area specified for an activity is known as work centers or work areas. There are some common work centers or areas in home. Common work centers in homes are cooking area, bathing area, sleeping area, entertainment area. Now we will talk one by one how we perform and what are the best uses and if necessity how best the available space should be there. So this is the cooking area where all cooking related activities are performed and that is known as kitchen. That is a basic need of the house for food for all members of the family. Now we will talk about the arrangement of the work centers in the kitchen. What is the basic need in the kitchen? You need the cooking area or the stove. You need the sink to wash the utensils and you also may need the refrigerator or anything else to store some kind of food material. Fridge can be inside the kitchen or outside the kitchen depending upon the available area. And this picture you are seeing the work triangle. So this also relate to the flow of the work. So you do not have to move again and again in the whole kitchen. So these are the work centers. You pick up the item, cook it and if you need to wash the utensils or need the water you can move this way. What we do in the kitchen? We cook for the family and store the equipment. These two pictures are showing how in India we do the cooking. One is by sitting. So on left side we have the sitting kitchen. Next we have the standing kitchen. Now this is a picture for the elevation of the sitting kitchen where you have the cooking area. On left side you have the food material. On right hand side you have the arrangement for stacking the utensils and after that you are also seeing or the tap water below that the bucket is capped. Now this is elevation plan in the standing kitchen showing various storage arrangement of where different activities are done. In the wall top where you can put take out the some kind of food material on the right hand side and on left hand side above some kind of the decorative material and the crockery and on the surface there is a cooking area and there is a water area or the washing area. In the drawers you can stack the utensils and other material required in the kitchen. In India basically we use four types of kitchen layout. One wall kitchen, two wall kitchen, L shape kitchen and the U shape kitchen. Let us see one by one. This is one wall kitchen. So this is again elevation plan of the standing kitchen. You can see very clearly in the colored picture the working area for the cooking and the working area for washing the utensils and directly above that the utensils are kept. So here again a single one wall kitchen where the modern kitchen is there to stack everything there and work at the same time. This is one wall kitchen. Now we talk about the U shape kitchen which is very common in household where most of the workplace can be 
done at one's aid. Other side you can work with the things and on the third side you can stack the food material as well as your utensils and the crockery. U shape kitchen. Now we see the L shape kitchen. On one side you do the cooking, on other side you stack the material and do the washing. Now this is two wall kitchen. On one side there is a cooking area, washing area and on the other side is the working platform where you can work. Now we talk about the food which can be served either in the kitchen or outside the kitchen. In this picture on right hand side there is a cooking area and on left hand side there is a dining table. Now we are talking about the pre preparation area which can be done either inside the kitchen or outside the kitchen. Now you need to store certain things in the kitchen but height is very important. So you cannot put the daily use at a very high area. So store things required most often at a height most conveniently accessible to avoid unnecessarily bending or stretching. This is a picture you can see everything as the right height, the cooking or washing area and here the specifications are washing utensil area should be near the cooking area. In this we try to explain you the storage area where the accessible things has to be kept. Store the things depending upon the need. Things used occasionally may be stored at a height above normal reach. Then put frequently used items at a reachable place to avoid lifting. Then store heavier things at the floor level as you can see with the circle in this picture. In this picture, the space is available, but we can use the for variety of activities in the same space. In this picture, you can see the sitting area in the drawing room as well as in the corner, the office work can also be done in the same room. And that this allows the other space to move into the second room. Now, this is the bathing area. What is the need here? In this area, we can use the washing also and washing machine is kept there. So that means again this area is used for two purposes. Washing of clothes and bathing activities are usually combined in the bathroom because that require the water supply. This is the storage area in the bathroom. Sometime if the space is available, you can store the required material for bathing, like towels, soaps, etc. can be kept inside the bathroom in the cupboard. Now, this is an important thing to note down that should not be done. The electricity and the water sources should not be very near. So here the wrong switch is kept there. It should be little above the height. You can see this should not happen because the light and the water is very near. This is very important floor must have the slope and should not be very slippery otherwise the fall can be there and that is very dangerous for the health. Now we will talk about the bedroom. Bedroom is also known as the sleeping area but bedroom is used for resting, sleeping, dressing and other activities like studying. Now, what is the importance when we are trying to plan for the bedroom? Provide enough space on both sides of the bed to facilitate the making of the bed as well as getting down from the bed. Now, another important thing is using the bed for multi-purpose. Here the bed is shown with the height. So, two beds can be placed in the same area and drawers are also put to use for using storage area. So beds can have the boxes or the drawers which can be used for the storage. Now this is a picture variety of boxes are shown here 
which are underneath the bed which can be used for storage. Suppose the woolens which can be used in the next season and can be put in a different framework of the bed. This is a study area. There should be enough space for the study table, good natural or artificial lighting, shelves for the books and the files. Now, another important area of the home is entertainment or recreation area which is popularly known as the drawing room or the living room. In this picture, you can easily make out variety of space is there to sit, to chat, to do any kind of activity with some kind of aesthetics, television, artificial light, showcasing and the natural light. So, this space is used where most of the people sit, do their work and chat and feel comfortable. So, entertainment is the necessity in every home. Entertainment area is where all members of the family get together, chat, watch TV or do any kind of similar work. Drawing room or the living room is also the place for other purposes like storing things displaying the decorative items. Now we will talk about in modern world where I told you the space is scarce and the costly. We cannot buy enough carpet area. So we have to accommodate many kind of activities in a single room. Now this is a one room apartment. In modern days it is also known as a studio apartment. So, there is a bed area, there is an entertainment area, there is a kitchen, there is a study area and the refrigerator is also there, natural light is also there, artificial light is also there, all with modern amenities and the storage area is there in one single room. So, we call it one room apartment. We will talk about certain guidelines for effective work centers or simply say Whatever space is available in a room where the work centers are, we will use the maximum space by using variety of techniques with innovative ideas, creative ideas. In this picture is of what? The kitchen that means the space for the cooking area and the dining area is adjusted in the same place. Arrange work centers in a sequential order to assist smooth flow of the work. You can see that you can go to the dining room, you can go to the kitchen room very easily. Now, another technique you can use to reduce the finding of the things. So, have transparent storage containers or keep them labeled. So, wherever you are finding any kind of material, you do not have to search here and there. You can easily see or look into the label what the material is there. Very important because nowadays we hardly have spare time to keep on cleaning the things and we have to maintain the equipment because they are not usable sometimes, they are costly. So, we have to purchase the equipment which has low maintenance and easy to clean. Whether it is a equipment, whether it is a surface area, so we always provide the surface of the kitchen shown here which is easy to clean. In the beginning that space or surface or the equipment can be little costly, but in the long run you save the time to clean and maintenance cost. Now we are talking about the lighting, ventilation because in the home these are two important criteria. So we have to have the window in each work center you are seeing the light is necessary when we are cooking. Window is there on left hand side to for the ventilation. We have a limited floor space. We have the limited 
area or the workplace. Nowadays, we are also having small size of the room for every activity. So, where we will keep the material? So, it is necessary to have the built-in storage to store the material. We can also have the storage cabinets, cupboards to occupy the floor space. So, now, it is important to have the surface area at a working place where you can conveniently do the work which is accessible to avoid unnecessary bending or stretching. See in this picture, this lady has also put the dustbin at a height and with the foot she can open the lid of the dustbin so she does not have to bend, move here and there. In earlier house, the always the dustbin has to go out long away but if it is kept or inside the kitchen, lid should be there to avoid any kind of hazard or to maintain the hygiene. Now, as I told you, we have a very limited space. What we can do? Create additional storage under the sink, staircase or with the sofa or the drawers. So, in these three pictures, you can see what kind of material even the dustbin is placed under the sink. Here the, there is a staircase, but with the built-in they have built the storage space for the books. Under the sofa, they have the drawers side by side as well as under the sitting area, you can store any kind of material there. Now we are talking about the storage, which is very important and necessary. Every home has to store some kind of the material maybe the clothes, maybe the books, utensils and what not. So, we have two types of the storage. One is functional and one is dead. What does it mean functional? Which you keep on using on frequent basis that is functional storage. In this picture you can see the books are kept below the table and you can function on the table also. But when we use the word dead storage, that means, the, you put the material as shown in the picture under the bed storage area is given there, but dead storage is called where the things are kept at a place or hidden at the top or under which you require less frequently or seasonally or maybe after some time. That storage space is not shown every time. So, functional storage is the one where material required for performing a specific task should be stored or stacked nearby the activity area. Different items can be stored at a height as per the frequency of use. Here again we have shown the functional storage as you can see the sandals and the shoes which are kept down because you require very often. But certain kind of boxes are kept above the hanging area which is also known as dead storage which I explained you just now. Now we are talking about the relationship between the space organization and aesthetics because in the home we always want to see beauty in the home and how you can maintain the aesthetics as well as use the space for maximum activity. Now we will talk about certain ways to organize the work centers for aesthetics as well as the functionality. There are certain ways we can use size of the furniture in relation to the working area. The space should always look tidy, attractive and organized. Storage of items can be done when they are not in use. There should not be any hindrance while movement or moving in the room with other items. Arrangement in relation to the activities performed. If I need to do the activity at right now, so I should be having kind of place where I can do such kind of activity maybe the studying. In many of the homes, we do the study on the dining table because we do not have the space 
separately for the study room. Enhance the aesthetics or the beauty or the look by using colors, natural or artificial lighting, decorative articles, furnitures, plants, flower arrangements and what not. Now we will talk one by one. Size of the furniture should fit in the size of the work centers leaving the working space and for the movement. In this picture it is very clear there is a enough space for the beds, enough space for storage, enough space for the table or the study table and still there is a enough space for the movement. In the small room if we use the lightweight furniture that is much more appealing and usable at the same time. Now this is a very beautiful, attractive, well organized space in the kitchen. Drawers are there, washing area is there but nothing is scattered. So any room or any place in the house or wherever you are working should look tidy, attractive and organized. Now this is a children's room but at the same time the furniture arrangement equipment arrangement according to the activities performed in a room. You can see the bed, you can see the floor area open for playing, there is a cupboard that gives the look that it is for the children and there is a small study table also where the student or the child who is maybe studying in class 5 or 6 or later can study in a decent room. How does it this room look? Everybody would like to have such kind of houses but if not available you can maintain this kind of house by giving the spacious look using the lighting arrangement. So using the light it will give the brighter look, spacious look to a room. Now I would like to make the specification about the tidiness, neatness and by using some kind of decorative materials, maybe the plants, maybe the lamps, maybe the wall pictures or even the selection of the furniture can give the beauty or aesthetics to any kind of room. Here again I am talking about the decorative item, indoor plants which can enhance the look. In this picture, the lamps are highlighted, plants are highlighted, wall pictures are highlighted to give a aesthetic look. Now, color combination is vital in interior decoration. If in a room, the sofa is there, chair is there, but upholstery is mismatched with the wall color. Curtains are mismatched with the wall color. Why interior designing is taking very high in today's world? Just because of the combination of using the color texture in the room. In this picture, you can see the wall color, curtain color, color of the upholstery, color of the pictures, maybe the frame. If in this place, I use the bright yellow somewhere or the color of the curtain is bright yellow or the green or the bright blue, you can imagine what they will look. So this can create or the combination of color can enhance the look of the room itself. Now this is a typical Indian home where I told you space is limited. So in a single room different activities are done and there is a space available in the cupboard to keep the clothes there. There is a sleeping area, also bed is there. There is an entertainment area, television is there and inside there is a kitchen, lady is working there but there is no enough space for the refrigerator. So they have kept the refrigerator in the same room itself. So every kind of activities, maybe in the side I can see the dressing 
area also or the dressing table. So, all types of activities are done in the same room. Still, we have to be very careful about the movement of the person living there. In this lesson, space management, you have learned the different working areas in the home because we are focusing of the space management in the home. Space management can be in the office, can be at other places, but by learning the simple guidelines, by using the color, by using the storage, maybe functional or the data storage, by using the proper height, by using the decorative material, by using the weight of the furniture, lighting, whether it is natural, whether it is artificial, all these techniques are usable in the working area and these are simple guidelines or few guidelines which can be learned and can be used for life any of the home to make that home comfortable, beautiful and still functional for your kind of activities you require and you feel relaxed by using simple guideline even the small home is available for you. Thank you very much.